All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm recording right now. So, everybody, I'm Drew in the future, and we're watching this. Oh, also, Skull Vikings won. won I'm a Vikings fan, won our first game. Finally got to win. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, my family's from northern Iowa. So, even though I'm here in Arkansas, um, I'm a Vikings fan. So, <laughs> there you go. Go Vikings. Yeah, so, yep, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we'll start with uh, kind of the basics y'all already got figured out. So um, if you guys have been 3D printing before, so have you done like 3D design and, and worked in CAD before? Yeah, yeah, I'll typically have our kids use Tinkercad right now. That's yeah. perfect, yeah. So uh, any sort of uh, program that can export an STL file works great. So like Tinkercad is perfect to start with. And then when they get more advanced, then you can do like Fusion 360 or Inventor or something like that. So um, yeah, Tinkercad's perfect. So um, from Tinkercad, they'll just click that download from 3D for 3D printing, and that will auto yep. automatically make the STL file. Cool. So then we'll put that inside of Cura. So that was the link that was on your SD card. So have you all installed that? I did. Did you get that installed, Greg? Okay. I have it on mine. Okay, cool. Well, then I'll walk you through. We'll just start with that, and I'll show you to make sure how to add this printer. So what kind of yeah. printer did you use in the past? Uh, we, have, we have the Affinias. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they do they have their own they have their own slicer then, I think, don't they? Yeah, I can I can show you there. Uh, yeah, I just saw the line of them over there. That's awesome. Yeah, nice. Got a little print farm. Yeah. Cool. So um yeah, you'll see that Kira is is super similar to to probably the same slicer that they have. So here I'll go ahead and, and share the screen here. So with Kira, what you'll need to do is you have to make sure that you have the correct printer selected. So um and the version of Cura that we're using is 4.3. Um, it should be in the, the upcoming version of it will have the fix for the A31, but right now it's a little bit wonky in the newest version. So um, we'll do in 4.3 and we'll click add printer. So I might've done that a little bit fast. So you click on this right here and then add printer. Yeah, the second, I gotta even, I gotta load that here. So Oh yeah, that's fine. And then first time you kind of open it up, it'll give you this screen too, where it'll ask you to add a network printer or a non-network printer. So. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm in... trying to get out of the screen here. We're on Zoom. I got to get to my desktop. Oh, yeah. You can press escape if mine full screened. Then you could, yeah, if you press the escape key, uh, move it around. That was the problem. So it's the Ultimaker, right? That 4.3? Yes, that's what it okay. is. Program. Okay. And then the first time opening, it's going to kind of have you go through the first time setup stuff, and it'll get eventually get to this, like, add a printer screen right here. Yeah, that's what I'm getting to here. Cool. It's loading the plugins, it says. I like y'all's classroom. Is that like a like a workshop or lab makerspace type thing? Uh, it's a modular lab. So we have the Pitsco modules. We've been trying to improve it every year. So. Looks like lots of space. This one is. <laughs> <laughs> Our other room is a little bit smaller. So let me know when it's all loaded up for you. Yeah, we get new computers this year, and they're so darn slow. I like the old ones. Yeah, our old ones were much faster. Okay, get started, agree. Perfect, yeah. Okay, I'm at add a network printer. Perfect, so right underneath that, the add a non-network printer, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. And then we're gonna scroll down to the NWA3D, Right here, NWA 3D, and then LLC. And then we have the A31 and the A5, and y'all have the A31. So that's the one that we'll click on. 
Hey, hold on one second here. I'm gonna grab my, my mouse. Okay, so I want to go walk you through to... this entire thing, and it's also in the user manual too. So it, so you guys it was the which one did you say? The A A thirty one. That's the one that y'all have. A thirty one. Did you find it? No. So it's no. in NWA three D. Okay, that's probably where I'm missing that. LLC. Yeah. I had to go get my mouse. I can't. Okay, NWA 3D. AWL. Where are you at, Craig? Well, it should be right here, but you only have A5. Mine only shows A5. Um. Oh, click on like something else and then go back to it. Okay. I like, click on it and then go back. Now they both on there. Yep. Uh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a weird bug. <laughs> 31, got it. Yep, and then add. Great. All right, so this is probably going to look similar to the slicer that you use with the Affinias. So you can hold the right yes. mouse button and kind of rotate it. You can load a file right here. So you can click load, and then you can find a file, uh, like here's a calibration cube, or on your SD cards, you can find something too. So we can load our file. And then we can click slice over here to slice our file. And we have our settings over here. So all the way to the left is the highest quality. Um, so that's 0 0.08 layer height. And then all the way over here to the right is 0.28, which is the lowest quality that will print the fastest. OK. So I just leave mine at normal quality right here, um, which is kind of right there in the middle. And then you've got your infill if you want to have support. You can name it down here. So if you want to name it something different, you can name it. And then you click slice to slice it. And then you'll take this and then you'll have, if your SD card is plugged into your computer like mine is, then you'll just click save to removable drive and then it'll save it right to it. And then you can say eject. And it'll tell you about how long it's gonna take and how much material it's gonna use. So is that okay. pretty similar to the other one that y'all use? Yeah, that one um, we just plug straight in with a USB and just send it to the printer and then you can unplug and just let her go. So this one, you'll save it to the SD card, and then you'll take the SD card and put that in the printer, and then it'll print, and you don't have to have okay. it. Great. So do you guys have any questions about Cura? You feel all right about it? No, I don't think so. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so then let's go ahead and jump over to the printer then. And uh, I've got to do kind of a, a camera move here. My <laughs> other camera decided it didn't want to work anymore, so I got to use just one. <laughs> So the first thing that we want to do is we want to check all of the plugs and kind of just inspect the printer and make sure that everything is all set up right and nothing got broken in shipping or anything else. So um, we're going to kind of look around. The first thing we'll do is check the cords. So back here in the back, these are the Y cords. Yep. So these two will both be Y on the limit switch and the motor. Yep. And then over here, these are the X. So this is the X right here and right here. And then down here is the Z. So this switch and that is the Z motor. Good, awesome. And then we will also wanna check in, and you can see this little slot here. And we wanna make sure that this bolt is pretty close to the center of that slot, these two bolts right here. And we might have to adjust this in a little bit if this isn't quite in the center. So that might be something that we need to adjust a little. But we can come back to it and we'll find out. Okay. And then we want to make sure the E is plugged in right here for the extruder motor. Does that look good? I believe so, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so then the next thing that we'll do is just kind of inspect the printer and make sure that nothing is really loose. And this is also a thing that you can do for its, uh, like after it's been printing for a while or something like that, we want to make sure that the belts are nice and tight so we can kind of tell that those are tight. And then we want to make sure that nothing rocks that shouldn't rock. So this should only go forward and backward. So it should be the metal and then the glass and then our NWA bill plate right here. And this should just move back and forth. Yeah, there shouldn't be any wiggle, right? No, there's no wiggle. 
Great. And then same thing with, uh, with our nozzle here. Make sure that doesn't wiggle. It only moves side to side and doesn't wiggle. And then same with these gantries too. Make sure that this doesn't wiggle either. So, yeah. great. If it ever does come loose, there are little adjustment nuts right here. They're called eccentric nuts that you can tighten with the wrench that came with it. So you just tighten this until the wheels don't spin anymore freely. They only spin when you're moving it and then you'll be good to go because it'll, it'll actually move the wheel against this extrusion right here. So that's a good way to just like tighten your printer up and make sure it's all good to go. Okay. All right, awesome. Well, let's go ahead and turn it on then and then we'll load filament in it. So this is probably similar to your finia where you'll squeeze this lever right here and then feed the filament through here and then here and then all the way through the blue tube until it stops. And you can cut it into a point with your clippers if you want to make it a little bit easier. Because sometimes it can be kind of tricky to get through that, that part. So we can kind of cut it into a point and cut off the melted bit. And that will be easier. And then when you're not using it, we have it in, in these little holes right here so we can take this out. And you can use any of the PLA that you have on your Finias with this one too and, and vice versa. So. Okay. We're just getting that set. Great. Yeah, the Affinias actually don't have this little lever. You just feed it right into the extruder. So I'm sorry, uh, what did you say? Oh, the Affinias don't have that little lever like that. They oh, okay. Oh, we're going to move them up. So you can kind of wiggle the filament if it doesn't quite go in, because you want to make sure that it goes in straight. See how this is a little bent? So I can kind of bend this one straight here and then feed it through. Okay, I think we're up to the nozzle. That's awesome. And then you'll kind of see it going all the way through that blue tube, all the way through there. And then we are ready to calibrate it. So with the Affinias, do you have the adjustment knobs on the bottom here? Uh, yeah, we do. Okay, so this is probably gonna be similar to that then. So we'll tap this button here and then go to setup and then auto home. And then that will move the X, Y, and Z to zero. And then when it stops, we'll be ready for the next step. Okay. So it goes all the way down to the limit switches for X, Y, and Z for zero. And then we set the height of zero by adjusting the four knobs here in a bit. Okay, yeah, hit the limit switch. Awesome. So then now we'll tap the button and then go to setup and then disable motors. And then now we can kind of move these around a little bit. So we can move this bed now and this nozzle until it's above this knob. Okay. And then when we tighten this, so if we turn it toward the screen, then that lowers the bed and pulls the bed down. And then if we turn it the opposite direction, that expands the spring and pushes the bed up. So what we want is the smallest of smallest gap between the nozzle and the plate. So you can either visually look and adjust it until that gap is super tiny. Or you can use a folded piece of paper as a gauge, which would be two tenths of a millimeter, and you can put that between it and use that as a gauge too and pull it back and forth side to side. Coming up, I don't want to 
-hmm. and you feel it kind of dragging and, and scratching on the paper. But you want to get just as close as you could possibly get, so it's two tenths of a millimeter, a tiny, tiny bit, without touching. And so it, it, it's going to be loosened quite a bit. I have a question every day. Okay, awesome. Well, then now let's move. I have this loose already. Oh, okay. So it could be this. This could be a thing where we need to adjust that bracket on the side that I mentioned. But before we do that, before we adjust this, let's just go ahead and go to the next one and kind of go all the way around. So move the nozzle over here and then loosen this one too, because the bed is so tight that one of them might be loosened all the way, but the other ones are so tight that the bed's like this. So the whole bed kind of needs to be raised up. So we can go to this one and do the same thing and then go all the way around on all, all four of them. The one in the back here and then this one, same thing. And then come back to the front and see if we can get that front corner then after the other ones are loose too. This is kind of just a first time setup thing because it comes tight in the box so it doesn't bang around. So what do we think? That one get pretty close? Yeah, that one is close. Awesome. Then I, I bet that front one then will work. And if it drags or scratches your bill plate, don't worry, because it's the last time the bill plate's going to look nice and pretty. Yeah. <laughs> so a space where you can adjust this up or down a little bit. Yeah, the back ones are good. The front ones are about an eighth of an inch yet. Are they and is are they loosened all the way? Are these are the, is it turned this way so the spring is loosened? Yeah. Okay, well then yeah, let's adjust this on the side then. So that's why this is here, so we can adjust it. So this little bracket here, what we'll want to do is we actually need to move this bracket. It, because of where the bed is, the bed just needs to go down just a little bit more. So we're going to take this bracket here and then we're going to loosen these two bolts. So let me kind of move this over a little bit so you can see it. So we're going to loosen this bolt and this bolt and then take this bracket and lower it just a tiny, tiny bit. And then tighten these two again. So we're not going to take it off. We're just going to loosen these two. And you'll use the three mil Allen wrench to do that. Okay. And then we'll just kind of shift it down just a tiny bit, like that eighth of an inch. And then tighten it back up, and then we'll auto home it again, and then adjust the knobs after you get it tight. More than <laughs> So did it move down a little bit? We're getting the one side here. Okay. Yeah, we got time. Okay. Oh. Both sides or just the one side, side, right? side, right? Oh yeah, just this side. Because this side's oh. got the switch. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna um Yep, just lower it a little bit and then retighten it. So just pull the switch down a tiny bit and then tighten it back up. So that's why they have these little slots in here. So you can kind of push the switch down a little bit. So you lower where Z is. Yep. And then tighten it back up and then we'll auto home it. Okay, so then to auto. Yep. So then we'll tap the button and say setup. 
and then auto home. And then once we auto home it, then we'll disable the motors again, and then it should be much closer. Okay, one second. Yep. And that's even if the motors are disabled, that doesn't matter? Uh, so it'll auto home it and then we'll disable motors again. So it'll re engage him when it auto homes. So, yeah, good question. Okay. Yep. And then now, since we kind of adjusted this a tiny bit, we should be able to kind of get it above here, and that should give us the leeway that we need to uh, to be able to get it just barely not touching. Okay. So you can move the nozzle over a little bit so it's it's a little bit more above. There we go, yeah. And you can flip the clips back too so they don't get in the way of the nozzle. Okay. Yeah, just like that. Is that better? Yep. yep. Awesome. Yep, um, and then you guys are on it. Go all the way around. Yeah. So where it's just barely not touching, about as thick as a piece of paper would be. Yeah, that was good, yeah. Okay, I think cool. we're good. All right, awesome. So let's go ahead and print a test print then. So. There's some prints already on the SD card. So if you want to get that SD card and put it in the side here, then we've got some prints on it that we can utilize. Uh, that's that little uh, white one? Uh, yes, the white USB. So inside of there is the micro SD card. Yeah. So it'll go with the gold contacts up right here, right here in the side. Okay, so pull that SD card out. And then gold contacts up right here in the side. It'll just click right in there. Okay. Great. And then now we'll tap the button. And then we'll go to refresh SD card. And then print from SD. And then now, when we scroll down. Mine just says back or main. Oh, so say refresh. Okay. So we're going to go down to. Test prints. Do you guys see a folder that says test prints? Uh, just a second here. Refresh SD card. And then and print then from SD. Print from SD. OK. Awesome. And then now, test prints is the folder that we're looking for. Got it. So when you save something, it'll just be saved directly on the SD card, but you can make folders too. So inside the test print, we have the, all these different files that we can do. But today, we're going to do the A31 calibration practice as just a test. So we'll go ahead and tap it. And then what that A31 calibration practice does is it'll heat the bed all the way up to 50 degrees, and then the nozzle to 220, and then it'll start printing. And it's going to print a big square and then a little square in the middle. And as it's printing the big square, we're actually going to adjust these knobs until the lines are nice and smooth and stuck to the surface. Okay. So when you go to print, you'll do this every time you print. So no matter what your print is, you're kind of rub your finger across it and make sure that it's stuck as it goes round and round and round. And then make sure that all the lines are stuck together too. So you'll actually adjust your print in like the first 30 seconds when it starts printing. And that's the best way to calibrate it. The way that we just did a little bit ago is the way that you can do it right out of the box, but you don't have to do that again this way unless you want to. You can just always calibrate when it's printing your model. So whether it's printing a rocket or a prosthetic limb, well, you'll just make these adjustments on that first layer and, and you'll get really good at it. If it's this in a way that you've uh, experienced 3D printing before with the Affinias, you'll get You'll you'll pick it up pretty quick, I think. Okay. 
So it says bed is heating. Great. Yeah. So the bed takes the longest, that's why it heats first. So you don't have to put any like uh, glue or anything on the bed at all? Nope, not at all. Yeah, this is a specially designed surface. So it's made for PLA to stick to it. So you can wash it down uh, with a little bit of alcohol if you ever get some like oils or something like that on it. But when you print on top of it and then you peel prints up, it'll, it'll remove filament that might be stuck. Like you can see mine's beat up from years of use. So they're made to last a long time. And then it's just a, a removable sticker too. So you could take this sticker off if it ever gets really tore up and you could use masking tape if you want to um, or another, put another print surface on there. But we don't yeah. recommend using glue or hairspray or any of that kind of stuff because it's, um, it's kind of bothersome. <laughs> and it gets everywhere. <laughs> So as this is heating up, do you all have any questions about anything? You, you feel pretty good about it. So far, so good. Yeah, awesome. So what kind of projects have uh, yeah, you all had your students 3D print that print farm? Um, it varies. You know, we have six graders typically. So oh. we've had like, everyone design a Happy Meal toy. Um, I have a project where they do an inventor uh, an invention uh, like a biography and then they have to replicate the invention that that inventor made. Oh, that's cool. So they have to like think outside the box to make something? And how we got the grant is that we said we were going to make uh, shields for our COVID-19. So we got these oh, yeah. and then yeah. we also purchased a CNC water mill. That's awesome. Yeah, so um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, like the food safety of that. So you can make sure that you coat it in something if it's going to come in contact with like somebody's mouth. And we actually wrote an article about that too with some tips. But something like these math guard, these, these like type of guards are perfect. And then the whole face shields themselves that hold the face shields on, those are great too because they're not coming in contact with something that might harbor germs. Because just that layering process of 3D printing, stuff can get caught in there. And then because it's PLA, it's really hard to sanitize. But that, that'll be awesome. So did you guys just get that that water jet too? No, we haven't got it out of the box. It just delivered two days ago. Awesome. But they uh, put another stuff on top of it. So. Yeah, that'd be great. Now, what's the temperature for the plate before it starts? 50. And then it'll start heating the nozzle up. And that's all in Celsius. Yeah, the nozzle's heating right now. Cool. Yeah, we want to try these to get a, a bigger envelope. Ours are right now are pretty small, so that's why we use like a half a meal toy or something like that. Yeah, definitely. So you got 12 inches by 12 inches by 16 inches tall. So, yeah. So do you sell a lot of these? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're, so we're in schools uh, across the country, mostly in uh, the central and southern U.S. Absolutely. 
Yeah, a lot of teachers like the big, uh, the big build area for sure. Mostly high school or middle school? It varies. So I would say it's probably more middle school um, than high school. And there's quite a few elementaries that have been uh, picking up steam in the past couple years too, of just doing different projects and things, especially with the ease of use of programs like Tinkercad. Um, so there's been a lot more elementary and middle schools um, that, uh, that have been picking it up too. But there's definitely quite a few engineering programs in high schools and junior highs that are doing it as well. And even libraries, makerspaces, science classes. Sure. There's all kinds of awesome applications. All righty, mine's moving. So it zeroes itself out and then it goes and starts to print. And it might take a second to build up pressure. So you might not see film come out right away and that's okay. okay. And then as it starts going, if it's too close, it'll dig into the build plate or it'll make a clicking sound as it moves around because it's almost like your thumbs on a water faucet. And if it's too far away, when you rub your finger across it, then it'll just knock loose. So this is stuck when I rub my finger across it and that's what you want. I don't see anything about that. Or it'll curl up and it won't stick at all. That's another way that you know that nozzle's just a little bit too far away. So basically just doing the fine tune adjustments now. And it can be too close in one spot and too far away in another, and that's totally fine. So this one here, this one popped up when I rubbed my finger on it. So I'm gonna adjust this knob up just a tiny bit, like a fourth of a turn. And I can even peel this off and then have it keep going around. We got it now. I don't think it was quite uh, Awesome. And it's sticky. And here, it was a little bit too close, so I'm gonna go the opposite way. I'm gonna go toward the screen so it goes down a little bit and then let it go back around. So it's gonna go around a whole bunch of times. So, so if you want to get your fingernail or just rub your finger on it? So you can pop your fingernail on it, but if it's, and, and you can knock it loose, but if it's really, if it's really easy to knock loose with your fingernail, then it probably needs to be a little bit closer. But we'll see here in a second, we can, we can remove it and see if there's gaps between the lines. Because the lines should be stuck together and you shouldn't see any blue between them. They should be flat lines that are stuck together. No. Almost like a big picture frame. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it's extruding. It started to, and now it's clicking. Okay, so if it's clicking, then it's a little bit too close because it's kind of pushing up against the plate. So we'll want to okay. turn the knob toward the screen just a little bit where you hear that clicking sound. Just like over here in my corner, it's still a little bit too far away. So I'm gonna turn it a tiny bit, bloop, this way. That side to this one, it'll bring it. So it'll come back down. Cause it's just, a, just needs to go down just a tiny bit. So it has space for the filament to come out and stick to the plate. Basically the filament needs to come out of the angle at a, uh, out of the printer or print head at about a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you want to take yours down. down. You gotta go the other way, I think. What? Yeah, that's, yeah that's where it gets tricky. As it keeps going around and we can kind of see which direction we need to go. Yeah. And it's gonna be pretty close once we get it calibrated today. It's gonna be pretty close to this every time you print. But you'll still just want to watch it like the first 30 seconds and make those fine tune adjustments because there's lots of things that are moving around on the robot that we have to uh, compensate for. There we go. Now I can see this, but it's a really thin line. So it's not as thick as it is over here. So I'm going to go just a little bit more. So now it's not it's kind of dribbling on yours. That would need to go up a little. So something that helps me is always, you know, like fourth of a turn or eighth of a turn increments when we're spinning it. So that side is too far. This side is almost perfect. There you go. 
Do we set this every time we do this then? So you'll do it on your print. So when you go, when you print your print and you'll do this just to make sure that it's calibrated and we'll just basically get it tuned in for the first time that we're using it. So it's going to be pretty easy to do every time you print from now on, especially if you just make those small adjustments right at the beginning. Turn it too far. Then it'll be a cinch. No, no, close enough. Making sure it's calibrated is the, is the toughest part of 3D printing. So we can go ahead and I'm going to remove mine here. So I'm going to use my scraper to take it off and then we can kind of inspect it a little bit. So we can see these strands, they're kind of separating. They're not stuck together. So that means in this back corner here, it needs to come up just a tiny bit. So these strands stick together like they did right here in this corner, in this corner here. So it can be a tiny bit too far away and a tiny bit too close. And you can drive yourself crazy trying to get it absolutely perfect. So the big part is, is when you're printing a, a print, especially a big print, if it curls up on the edges, then it's a little bit too far away. And then if it's so stuck that it's hard to remove, well, then it was a little bit too close. So we're kind of looking for that Goldilocks zone of right in between that. I think we got three sides okay. It's just that one, one corner. So all four of them kind of uh, adjust the plate. So we start in that one corner, but it, it could help to do the opposite corner a little bit too and kind of see where that is. And that can help out as well to help kind of balance. So if it's our print, basically what this is going to do then, it's like when you're putting the build tack down, is that what it is? Yes, yeah, so this is build tack. This is very similar to build tack. So you could replace the surface with build tack too if you wanted. That'd work as well. So you want to be able to not see the gaps between the lines. So I don't know how well you all can see this, but if we look in right here, this we can still see this gap between it right here. So it just needs to go up just a tiny bit more so it's nice and flat like this line is over here. Yeah, that's okay. That looks pretty good. That's awesome. All right. So you don't have to do this print when you, when you go to print your prints. You'll just do this with your print. So when you go to print yours, you'll just do this with it and, and, and adjust it. So if you're going to print um, a rocket or the invention or, um, or whatever they're going to make, you'll just make those tiny adjustments on that first layer to make sure that it's nice and stuck. Okay. And then once you got that going, it, since it's going to be pretty close every time, it'll be pretty quick. Awesome. Well, yeah. Well, if it's sticking good, that's all I got for you. I just want to make sure everything's printing right and, and uh, y'all got the process down. So do you have any more questions for me? I don't think so. Nothing okay. else where you're at. So. <laughs> well, you recorded this too. So we could have. I did, yeah. And do you do you care if I post this publicly for our knowledge base, or do you want me to keep it as a private link for you? We don't, we don't care. Okay, great. Yeah, so I'll post the link then, and then I'll uh, I'll send it to you, and uh, we'll we'll get you 3D print, and I'll also send you the uh, the link to our service too, so we can help you out, um, and some other details and things like that too in an email. Okay. All right, y'all. Well, have a good one. Take care. Thank you very much. You bet. Have fun 3D printing.